Oh, I didn't see you there. Hey guys, Ed Bud here, and I'm back with a comparative test after the recent viewer poll uh, suggested it should be a shootout between the Vaporfly Next Percent Ekaden and the Hoka Ononi Carbon X. So I've taken both shoes out on kind of similar runs, not absolutely the same. Really wasn't prepared to do a full on kind of threshold interval effort twice in a week. That's just asking for trouble. I want to try and keep myself fit and fresh. My wife bought me this. I've just started reading it. Quite interesting. Um, examining the history of Nike and Phil Knight. Check it out. A few people recently have asked me when I'm going to comment about the recent issues surrounding Nike, surrounding the, the Salazar issues. I will comment upon that very soon. I want to get all my thoughts together, really, so I can put them across very clearly in a very concise manner. I don't want people to misunderstand my opinion and my stance on this matter. But that aside, I don't really get, want to get too political either. You know, Ed Bird, I love the shoes and the shoes are precious to me. So do look out for that very soon. I'm not going to get political in that video at all. I'm just going to discuss very clearly my views about the situation um, and also my views about how women are treated in general because I don't agree with the way that women are treated even now in 2020. It's just not on. Anyway, back to shoes. So, as you well know, I'm very wary, and you should always be wary, about taking a shoe straight out of the box and utilising it at race pace in an event. It's just not a good idea. You know, I've gone a half size up in the Next Percent Ekaden, and I really wanted to make sure that if I was going to use the shoe for the Blackmore Vale Half next weekend, that I'm comfortable in the shoe and it's going to let me perform to the best of my abilities. So I ventured out on an interval session hopefully to reach some paces a little above, a little above, below, above the paces that I want to hit during that Blackmore Vale half marathon. The session was to comprise of about eight miles, so a two mile warm up at around about seven minutes 30 per mile, well that's about four minutes 40 per kilometer. The interval section of the run was gonna be three repetitions of 1.25 miles, at roughly six minutes 40 per mile. That's about four minutes, eight seconds per kilometer. Beast, what are you doing? Beast causing havoc in the shoe sanctuary by knocking over a number of shoes. Oh well. So I set aside around about 200 meters recovery in between each of those repetitions. It's gonna be a further two miles at sort of lower pace, around about eight minutes per mile pace just to finish off the session. This seemed like a really good opportunity to get a very sort of hard, tough effort in at around about four miles at a little below that target half marathon pace that I've got in mind of around about six minutes 50 per mile. Gotta say, the warm up felt really, really good in the next percent Ekadin. I could definitely feel a little bit more room there in the toes. I didn't feel quite so constricted. It wasn't like I was kind of trapped in a lift with like a herd of buffalo. I managed to reach that seven minutes 30 per mile kind of warm up pace without any issues. I wouldn't suggest the extra length in the shoes was instantly kind of recognizable. But when I did start running in them, I could feel that there was a little bit of extra kind of wiggle room for my toes. It felt nice. It's kind of like when you go to the cinema and you want to try and sit on the kind of edge of a row so not too many people are kind of gonna walk past you as you're watching the trailers. It felt like I was at the front kind of row without being too low and you got a perfect view of the screen. You catch my drift, right? So the first rep was about eight minutes, 16 seconds, six minutes, 37 per mile. Kept the breathing nice and controlled and managed to grab a little footage on that first rep as well on the GoPro. I film a lot of the slow-mo footage at 120 frames per second. I tend to leave it in like 1080 resolution. There is stabilization on my GoPro, but it's the lesser stabilization. It's not that hyper smooth thing, but I think it came out all right. So I noticed heart rate rose up a little from 145 to 153 during that first rep. Still a lot lower than I thought it was gonna be. So the second rep was a little bit slower mainly due to a young lad who was on a balanced bike. Um, I didn't want to crash into him, had to take some evasive action. And I also had encountered an interesting dog as well who kind of wanted to follow me. Tell you what, he's knocking back some good pace there. 
that dog could move. I think he was hitting about maybe six minutes 45 per mile. I don't think he would have been able to sustain that type of pace though. He yeah, was only a Jack Russell anyway, so I'm not sure he's kind of cut out for the half marathon distance quite yet. That second rep was about six minutes 40 per mile. And again, heart rate seemed to average out about 153 beats per minute with an overall time of the rep of eight minutes 20. The third rep was tougher and yet even more obstacles for old Ed Bud to try and navigate around. I also ended up having to sort of double back as well, kind of run out of path. Um, I was getting near to some road and running at that pace, I really don't want to be chancing road crossings and things like that. It's just dangerous. But again, I was happy to reach somewhere near the pace I wanted, about six minutes, 45 per mile, 154 beats per minute over fridge for the heart rate and a total time of eight minutes, 26 seconds. So not a massive amount of difference between the three reps. I did start to tire a little bit towards the end. Cadence over each of the repetitions was about 176 steps per minute. So happy with the body performance, Happy with the shoe performance, or well, very happy actually. These felt absolutely fantastic. And I think the testament to them is that my legs and my feet, everything felt fantastic after the run and the next morning. I like wearing socks from a company called Stance when I'm running, uh, they're particularly comfortable and they seem to wash really well as well. You know, as runners, it's really tough. You always seem to be washing everything continuously starting to dry things when you're washing the next batch it's a never-ending task so having something that washes really easily and consistently well is a really good thing i think the fit with those stance socks and this slightly larger sized next percent was perfect i wouldn't say it was like glove like but it felt like i had enough room that i could move the toes around a little bit nothing felt like it was being restrained or compressed a little wiggle room but a very good race sort of fit. Perhaps it's my form that's improved a little bit. Perhaps it's sort of leg strength has developed somewhat. Perhaps it's just experience, but all three of the reps felt more sustainable, more reachable. So any fears I really had about using that shoe in a race situation certainly have been removed. The next day, the legs, the calves, they felt really good. There was lots and lots of standing the next day, some operatic performance archiving, a little bit of teaching, and I felt no ill effects whatsoever. So second test was of the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. If you don't like seeing running shoes that have got very dirty, then please look away now. Actually, it's not that bad. I did take this out, it's quite muddy along the typical trail. This shoe used to be absolutely sparkling white, but it isn't anymore. I have tried to clean this up a bit, but hasn't made much of an effect. So as I said earlier, I'm loath to consider a shoe for the half marathon distance unless I've sort of tested out at sort of race type paces. So I took these out for a seven mile effort today. Contained within that seven miles was to be four miles of fartlek. And I tried to push up towards the paces that I reached on the previous run in the next percent Ekaden. That meant within the fartlek, varying up the pace between about eight minutes per mile and up to about six minutes 30 per mile. I had about 1.5 miles of warm up at seven minutes 30 prior to the fartlek section and then another 1.5 miles afterwards at a lower pace to give myself a bit of a break. Both days I ran four miles early morning um, just to get the legs loosened up and get the legs moving. Use the Pegasus 36 shield for both of those runs. So still a shoe on the lighter side of life. I found a little difficulty reaching out seven minutes 30 per mile warm up. So in a bid to try and reach the sort of six minutes 36 or six minutes 40 that I reached in the next percent Ekaden, I opened up the throttle a little bit in the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. Certainly the feel is good when you put this shoe on again. I mean, I haven't worn it for a little while, but the upper just feels so good. It's so light. It's barely even there. It's barely present on your foot. That side, need to make sure I've got a good lockdown because that upper is so light. If you don't lock down the shoe properly, you kind of feel like your foot's kind of clanging around inside the shoe because that midsole, you know, is very rigid. You really do feel that toe off as you kind of push off through the gait cycle. Despite the next percent having a slightly wider kind of area on the outsole, this one still feels a lot wider. I don't think it's anywhere near as narrow through the arch either. It's certainly a more responsive ride in this shoe than the next percent. That midsole foam is a little bit more rigid. You feel like you've got, I wouldn't say it's road contact, but you certainly feel 
a little lower down to the ground than in the next percent. I thought about messing around with insoles with this shoe, but when I did try some others out, it just kind of lost the original feeling that I had and really enjoyed when I first tested this shoe out back in the summer. I'm not sure why Hoka go for those really thin insoles. I did take them out the Carbon X, these are actually the ones from the Rincon, and they're practically the same, there's just nothing to them really. If you have experimented with different insoles in your Hoka shoes, please comment down below. I'll be really interested to see your experiences and your feelings, uh, whether it was a successful operation. So legs felt pretty good after the run in the Carbon X. I wouldn't suggest they felt as fresh as they did on the run in the Ekaden on Wednesday. I think the underfoot feel is a little bit more responsive, it's a little bit more rigid, there's not quite as much kind of energy return there. I managed to hit paces of an average on that fartlek section of around about 7 minutes 4 seconds per mile, that's about 4 minutes 24 per kilometer. Cadence was about 168, so a little bit lower than in the Vaporfly Next Percent Ekadin. So which of the shoes am I going to be reaching for come the Blackmore Vale Half Marathon? Well in terms of performance I think the next percent probably is the one. I did enjoy my run today in the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X, but it doesn't quite leave me feeling as kind of fresh after seven or eight miles as the next percent. I think though I'm gonna consider all my options on the day and see what the weather is like, see what the underfoot surface is like. It could be wet, it could be icy. We really, really need to wait and see exactly what weather conditions are given on the day. Certainly traction in both shoes was really great. Um, going at some more considerable paces for me. I know loads of you out there probably run a hell of a lot faster or can run faster than me. I'm still getting there. I give my best and I'm certainly improving. I think you can see by the footage as well, I think my form's starting to improve a little bit. The more and more I'm running, perhaps at lower paces, I think that's helping. Quick music update for you. I know you viewers like the music updates. This week, been listening to this fantastic album by Television called Marky Moon. This is a really precious copy of mine. The cover's completely fallen apart. It's actually a 1977 copy. Really glad to get this. Um, I think it was the summer before last. If you haven't ever heard Television before, they do some fantastic tracks where the guitars just seem to sort of dance and interweave with one another. Kind of like a musical Cabri's Curly Whirly. See No Evil, Marky Moon, every track's a winner on here. Do check it out, Marky Moon by Television. I'm pretty sure that they were a New York band. Really interesting kind of vocal style and just great guitar work, really really great guitar work. Almost sort of jazz at some points. The drums are great too. Just a really wonderful album. Do check it. In fact, that one needs to go straight back downstairs in a protective place in case Beast knocks it down. Did you hear that, Beast? Where are you? She's supposed to be the guardian of the shoes. It's just destroying everything in here at the moment. So please ensure you keep those comments informed and friendly. You know, it's free to be friendly, right? Hit subscribe. I'd very much appreciate it. Like the video if you'd be so kind. Share it with your friends and, most importantly, your pets. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.